up? It's Jimmy Murray, and I'm here with Frank Padalano, and we are the Cash Flow Kings. The Cash Flow Kings podcast discusses money, finance, mindset, and investing with an emphasis on cash flowing real estate. Hi, and welcome to the Cash Flow Kings podcast episode one. Are you an investor? My name is Frank Padalano, and with Jimmy Murray, we're here to help you crush it and make money. So. Episode one being an intro, we want to give you guys a little bit of a background on ourselves to hopefully gain some street cred and pique your interest to continue to follow our journey purchasing cash flowing real estate and businesses. So I'm Jimmy Murray. I have a background in finance, originally coming straight out of college with a degree in finance and landing in the um, investment industry, quickly realizing that the mutual fund industry really wasn't my thing and began to focus on multifamily real estate. From there... I bought my first four family into a year in the financial industry, house hacked that, started wholesaling, didn't really make that great income from wholesaling, but did make money, flipped a couple properties, launched a property management business, recognized I became a jack of all trades and a master of none, and then dialed in on the property management business, then house hacked the second multifamily property, and the rest is really history from there. A couple years back, or you know, met Frank a few years back, and uh, recently he came to me with the idea. He said, hey, I, I like your cash flow king hashtag. What do you think we can do with this? I said, how about a podcast? So let me turn this over to Frank so he can give you a little bit about his background. So Frank Padalano here. Um, I have more of a background in education. Uh, I was uh, teaching for a long time, history, etc. And when I did that, I was mostly investing in stocks. But uh, about 10 years ago, I said, hey, why don't we try real estate? So I started with a multifamily and then gradually uh, grew it, bought a few more, uh, bought a few with partners, and now I have uh, over 50 units in the local metro area and, uh, you know, looking at other parts of the country as well. But yeah, there's definitely plenty of ways to make money with cash flow. And Frank's always good for sending me, you know, 30 units in Ohio or 40 units in Tennessee and asking me what I think about the numbers. And I think that's the name of the game, right? Always having an interest in trying to price or find value in some type of cash flowing asset. So this first podcast is mostly to ask the question, are you an investor? And first thing I want to do is I want to define what is an investor. So for me, I consider an investor someone who puts their money to work with the expectation to make more money. There is some risk involved. Uh, Having a savings account or an emergency fund does not make you an investor. It's not a spending account either unless you're raising the cash to spend on investments later. Jimmy, how would you define the word investor? So I really think it's all about mindset, and I know this drives Frank nuts, but I think mindset is first and foremost, you gotta gotta be thinking about this correctly. But honestly, I really agree with Frank on a lot of the points that he makes. You know, it, it starts with saving, but just having that savings account, it doesn't make you an investor. What makes you an investor is when you develop that nest egg, and then you go out and you try to get that money to earn money. So it's all about being in that bottom right hand quadrant of the cash flow quadrants as many of you may be familiar with from Robert Kiyosaki. So really, in order to be an investor, or in my opinion, if you really want to be considered an investor, your money has to be earning you money. There you go. So let's go with that. Some people that consider themselves to be investors uh, might bring it to a casino or might bring it play some lottery tickets, stuff like that. Do you consider gambling to be investing? Well, I mean, the lottery is the poor man's, ta- poor man's tax, right? Because Absolutely. Because that's kind of, that's that's a dollar or two dollars for a dream. And I, you know what, it is a good, pretty good 24-hour dream when you buy that ticket. But I would not say that that's an investment. Now, gambling, unless you're a rain man and you're counting cards and, you know, at a blackjack table, probably not investing either, even though that that's a very refined formula. Investing has to be more calculated. Now, not to the point of analysis paralysis where you can't pull the trigger and actually get a deal done, but there's gonna be some level of calculation, but at the end of the day, you're gonna make money while you sleep. So I hear people say all the time that, oh, their nice car or their boat or their big house is an investment. What do you think of that? I think those are all liabilities and they're not investments. I mean. Some sales folks, you may need to use a vehicle to get around, and from that perspective, it is an investment to earn you an income, but is it actually going to earn you dollars? Maybe in the event of a classic car, potentially it could, but typically those are liabilities to sustain your life outside of earning you some type of return. 
Well, not only that, but most of the time they're not cash flowing. So yeah, that's pretty important to think about. Yeah, I mean, unless you know, you're like, a, I've heard a couple of stories of college kids buying single family houses and renting out the bedrooms, potentially, right? But yeah. in the most basic sense, those are going to be liabilities. Those cost you money. They don't make you money. That's like a single family house hack or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a single family house hack can happen, and there's actually a local investor we know that has done that. But more typical than not, I wouldn't consider those folks investors for buying a fancy car or a big house or a boat. That's just going to cost you more money in the long run. All right. So the reason why um, I always go nuts when you say mindset first, and I agree with you that mindset does play a role, is the whole concept of people who just have the mindset, but they don't have anything really invested yet. The only thing they're investing is like their knowledge. But besides that, I mean, sometimes when I think of investing, I think of what kind of dollar amount they put in, what kind of percentage of their of all their money do they have investing or out there to invest. Right, so you got you can tell that Frank's the tough numbers guys over, over here. He wants a percentage of what you have to be considered an investor. Maybe that's a good number that we talk about. But um, in terms of mindset, I think it starts with investing in your mindset. So investing in the knowledge, reading books, going on bigger pockets, finding whatever forum you can to learn more about whatever you're trying to chase. And hopefully, the Cash Flow Kings becomes one of those forums for you guys. Yeah. So let's ask another question then. If someone just has a regular job and has like $50,000 in their 401k, they shouldn't be walking around considering themselves an investor right now, am I right? I would say if it's a company sponsored 401k, you're not necessarily an investor, you're doing a good job at saving for retirement. Now, do you own stocks and mutual funds within that portfolio? Absolutely, but I wouldn't consider you an investor. You're a, you know, Whatever you do during your nine to five or normal day job, that I would I would say that's who you are, and uh, you're just trying to invest for a better future, but not necessarily an investor. Right. That that those investments aren't going anywhere for you to uh, be better off, except for when you don't have a job anymore and when you're retired. Right. Yeah. So then those become investments, and probably still not an investor. But hey, hopefully you have a great nest egg and you can enjoy your life in retirement. So one of the one of the things that we always talk about, like family stories. Jimmy, why don't you tell the story about the first time that your mom or your dad or something was talking about you being an investor or not? Yeah, so crazy thing. It happened at a cookout, family cookout a few years back. And what my parents don't realize that before this happened, I used to drive around on Saturdays and Sundays and walk into open houses and tell realtors that I was an investor. And that was what helped me gain more confidence in the knowledge that I was building outside of you know, trying to find more properties to buy. So sitting at this cookout and a distant relative that I, I honestly can't remember her name, met her one time, she said, hey, Jimmy, what do you do? So I told her, I'm an investor. My dad's head pops up across the table. He said, no, you're not. You work for XYZ investment firm. And I said, no, I'm an investor. So now the distant relative is looking up all puzzled and my mom pops in and my mom said, and my dad's name is Jim too. So my mom says, no, Jim, Jimmy is an investor. He's flipping houses. He's bought a multifamily house. He continues to try and build his knowledge and build his wealth. He's an investor. And like that was a major turning point because a lot of times when you start out, your family tells you you're crazy. When I bought my first four family property, my dad told me it was the worst financial decision I've ever made. And now he's actually come around and he realizes that it's actually the best financial decision I've ever made. So that was a big turning point for me. And just you know, having your family reach that point where they're able to believe in you and now I am considered an investor, it just gives me more momentum to continue doing the great things that we're doing. Yeah, well, I'm glad you took some action. Yeah, me too. Uh, it's been a wild ride, got a lot of good stories and uh, maybe the quality of life isn't where I need it to be sometimes, but Hey, it's been a heck of a ride. So if you want to laugh, um, I have the opposite example with my family. Um, it's very different. Most of my family members don't know that I'm an investor right now. And uh, this podcast and starting to see this stuff <laughs> might, might really change the game a little bit. But there, in my family, there's too many people with negative mindsets about real estate, about investing. Um, my mom, she owns a couple properties through my grandparents, and she hates real estate. So going with that, we don't talk about real estate at all. Just because I knew how negative she was, it's like, nope, never hitting that again. Yeah. You know? So 
Besides that, that go ahead. I was going to say, that's a really good point, though, the, the negative mindset, because let's touch on that. A lot of people may have a negative mindset to say, I don't have enough money to be an investor. But hey, guys, guess what? My first four family cost me less than $6,000 out of pocket to get that to the closing table to purchase a cash flowing piece of real estate. So I would say don't get hung up on the dollars. Uh, you know, some of these gurus put out there that you can get into a property for zero, no money down. Maybe that's a little crazy. Sometimes you can make it happen, but that's really the diamond in the rough. But you don't have to have a million dollars to be an investor. No, absolutely not. Um, what about the whole concept of uh, loving the process? Yeah, so I think that's definitely part of being an investor. You gotta love the process. Um, candidly, before I bought my first four family, maybe I saw 10 properties, I just got lucky. Sometimes you gotta be lucky to be good. But before buying that second one, I had to drag my poor realtor through at least 100 properties. And uh, fortunately, he was buying multifamily real estate too, so hopefully he was able to pick up a couple of those. But that's where you really learn what you're interested in buying, what a good investment looks like. It's really all about the process. It's about the hunt. You know, if you don't love the hunt and you don't love the process, this probably isn't going to be a game for you because every property you go out to is not going to be a deal. Every property you go out to, you're not going to be able to buy. But it's part of the education process and being an investor. So back to the negative mindset concept. Um, I always drives me nuts whenever I hear somebody say I can't afford it, especially when we're talking about real estate. Yeah. And uh, like I said, we've both read the Rich Dad series. And one way to think about it to have a more positive perspective is how can I afford it? And I tell that to people all the time. Like I have a new, a new mentee. He's about 20, 21 years old. And he's very excited right now about buying his first real estate deal. And he keeps telling me that he has no money. It's like, ooh, find the deal. We'll find the money. Whether you have to partner it, wholesale it, whatever, it can easily happen. And that, you know, that's tough to believe in the beginning, right? Because you may think that you come across a deal and you bring it to a mentor or another investor and they shoot it down. But that's part of the education process and that's part of loving the process and, and hunting for the right deal. But Frank's absolutely right. If you have the right deal, the money's going to come. And as an entry level or beginner investor, you may not feel that, but you know it. I mean, I remember when I got my first wholesale deal. I heard the gentleman on the other end of the phone tell me what number he wanted for his three family in Attleboro. And I absolutely knew it was a deal. I, I almost jumped out of my skin. I was like crazy excited. But when you get that, you're going to know it's a deal and the money will follow. We have a mutual couple that we know. And uh, the first multifamily they bought, they're house hacking yeah. right now. And out of the blue, after they bought, they're like, oh, yeah, we're, we're done looking for a year. I said, no, you're never done looking. Yeah. I said, keep finding that next deal. Sometimes you'll find two or three deals a year. Sometimes you'll find zero. But you yeah. always need to be looking because at some point, even if you can't afford to find it, uh, afford to buy it, somebody else will pay you to find it for them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I actually have a story related to that. But I, uh, I received the deal from a wholesaler about a month back. And I couldn't purchase it, but I floated it to another investor and I get a $500 bird dog fee, right? Because I gained that investor access to the deal. So it's all, it's all part of that investment mindset. If you can't buy it, you know, real estate investing is collegial. You'll be able to find somebody else that is very interested in clearing that deal. I like to say investing is a team sport. I like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I totally agree with that. So stay focused on building your team, whether it be mentors, other investors, wholesalers, hard money lenders, you name it. It's really about building that team so that you can successfully chase whatever financial freedom you're trying to get out of this. Going with that, uh, just to make you laugh, I can never find enough plumbers or electricians. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so fortunately, uh, you probably have to kill me to get my plumber's name. Yes, I understand. Because they're so good. Well, that's why I'd never give up my, my main handyman either. Right, yeah, yeah. And, and that's how it gets. Uh, but, you know, electricians can be tough. But building out that maintenance team is, is definitely going to provide you solid support as well. So now that we've defined what, um, what an investor is, why don't we talk about how you can become a better investor? Yeah. So, Jimmy, first, th first thing that comes out of your, your mind here to become a better investor. Reading. I'm a big book nerd. And honestly, um, I stay focused on real estate books. Sometimes they get a little bit boring, so I'll, I'll transfer it to maybe some negotiating books. Frank, Frank says I'm an okay negotiator, so I'm going to try and continue to build on that skill. Um, 
And then listening to podcasts is another one. Where to be our podcast or any others? Um, Zig Ziglar calls it Automobile University, right? So as you're driving around, you know, you could be driving to the beach during the summer, or you could be, you know, driving to go snowboarding or skiing in the winter, and hopefully you get that podcast on listening, whether you're driving for groceries too. Great time to continue to build your repertoire. Most of the time when I'm driving, I'm doing one of two things. I'm either on the phone talking about real estate or I'm listening to a podcast about real estate, money, or investing. Yeah. It's that easy. So here's the big thing. You, you're you listening to this right now. You want to become an investor? Don't listen to those radio advertisements where guys are asking for your money to learn about real estate. There are so many free resources. I learned real estate from YouTube and Bigger Pockets. I know that Frank's really good about going to the library and, you know, renting out CDs. That that investment knowledge never gets old. So right now I'm listening to the secrets of power negotiating. Yeah. So, so it was, it's completely free. Right. So so why not? Um, for me, to become a better investor, uh, not just free ways, but low cost ways, if you can find locally a real estate group or a meetup, that would be my number one way to go besides book reading and besides listening to podcasts. Uh, we are lucky enough to have a gift of an amazing real estate club right in our local area that we meet once a month. There's about 100 people that show up to every meeting. We have over 200 members, and it's basically $10 a month to be a member. And it's not a sell session. It runs like a club. We help each other out. You know how I say invest in the team sport? All my partners I have found through that group. Yeah, and that's amazing because there are a lot of great people in that group. And the other cool thing, Frank says, maybe not free, but low cost. How cheap is a cup of coffee? A lot of the guys in the room, they'll be willing to grab a cup of coffee, you know, if not during the day, then on the weekends, because they're excited to give some, some knowledge back that they gained along the way. Definitely. I know, I know at least three people in that group with net worths of well over a million dollars that take time out of their day to have coffees and lunches with new investors just starting out. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, I've done it too. So, absolutely. I'm there. I'm always down for a free lunch. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you're listening and you'd love to pick my brain, you're in the area, free lunch is the way to go. I'm there. I'll give you as much knowledge as you need. <laughs> is, is Subway okay? <laughs> Subway's okay. <laughs> absolutely. All right. So, take a, you, you mentioned books. So, what would be the number one book that you would think about right now? Um, not necessarily that you have to own, but you should read if you want to consider yourself an investor. Yeah, so hands down, it's The Richest Man in Babylon. You know, there's three main tenets in that book. And the big thing that it talks about, it starts out with the main tenet one of saving. The next tenet is two, in terms, or number two tenet in that book is making your gold earn more gold, right? So that's making your cash, your savings, earn more cash or money for yourself without you physically having to put in any man hours maybe a little bit of time, but more mental strength. And then the third one is, the, it, the book talks about how you need to find someone in whatever realm that you're willing to invest in. So if you're gonna be a real estate investor, you probably wanna find a solid realtor to help you find a deal. You know, you're not gonna find a plumber to help you find a multifamily investment deal. And hopefully I didn't spoil the book for you guys, but I still think it's an incredibly worthwhile read. Frank, what do you think? Absolutely, I love the book. I actually, uh Picked it up again and read it for a second time this year, just for the heck of it. That's awesome. Out of the blue. Um, personally, my uh, favorite book is uh, the Rich Dad, Poor Dad series, and Rich Dad, Poor Dad being the number number one on that list. It wasn't the first book I actually read in Money and Finance, it was the second. But um, I love this book so much, I try to read it at least once a year, and uh, I actually have uh, even read it with my uh, preteen daughter. I love that. Uh, bought a copy. She has a copy, and we've, we've read it together. Yeah. So, so, I mean, I'm trying to make my future generations be better off than I was. Yeah. So, a uh, little insight into my life. Every morning I wake up, I write down affirmations. And my last affirmation is building generational wealth for my family. So, Frank, I'm right there with you. So, circling back on what does it take to be an investor? To be a real estate investor, if you can do simple arithmetic you can have a high level of success. Now, when I talk about simple arithmetic, if you can add, subtract, and divide, you can make money. And uh, like I've told Jimmy before, I like to multiply my wealth, so that works out pretty well with it. Yeah, so multiplying happens after all that, right? Is that order of operations? <laughs> yeah, that does, there you go. Right? So the multiplication happens later. 
But seriously, guys, I mean, when you look at a multifamily property, you're looking at revenue minus expenses divided by your rate of return, and it is that simple. Not trying to oversimplify it by any means, just trying to show you that anybody can do it. We hope that you enjoyed the first episode of the Cashflow Kings podcast. Feel free to check out our website, www.cashflowkings.com, and definitely feel free to check us out on Instagram or Facebook under The Cashflow Kings. To your success. So, quick disclaimer at the end here The Cashflow Kings program is for basic entertainment purposes only. We do not give official legal, tax, or investment advice. Each person should consult their own advisors prior to making any financial decisions.